Welcome guys to the Monday night call. Uh, thank you all for attending again. Like I understand that your time is your most valuable asset and you're spending it here tonight again. We love these Monday night calls because we like to make them a little bit different and we like to like put, uh, bring you entrepreneurs that have had success, that have got runs on the board, that can share their tips and uh, tricks on how to get success so we can do it even faster. So tonight we have the amazing NMD, Melanie Brandt. And to be honest, uh, she probably doesn't even know this, but Vicky and I have been watching uh, her and a couple of the NMDs, but we really watched Mel closely when we were uh, in the business, honestly, doing nothing <laughs> and learning how the hell we could get success like she does. So we've seen her on stages. We've seen her like have massive success on recruiting. And like I was really blessed recently to come down to uh, an event and I got to spend a couple of days with Mel and get to know her a bit better. And to really just say that she knows who she is and she's unapologetic for that. And I think every amazing success that, I'm, that I see out there really is gets to that point so like tonight mel take yourself off mute and yeah share us some of that awesome attitude and tell us how to recruit a billion people <laughs> <laughs> oh i thank you joel that is so awesome i am absolutely humbled to hear that you were watching um it's a really nice feeling i guess we hope people are, are watching and taking something from our journeys. Like you just never know. You don't know who's watching. And I'm going to share a little bit about that. So some of you guys I haven't seen before or maybe I haven't met. So for anyone that doesn't know me, my name's Mel Brandt. Um, I've been uh, a national marketing director now for a couple of years and been um, in the world of online business for about uh, almost four years now, which look, you might've heard people say it before, but wow, it goes fast. It literally has flown by. And if I had my time again, I would totally start all over um, because it brings me that much joy uh, to be able to have found something in my life that uh, aligns those purposes and those passions. So on this journey, look, I haven't been keeping count as such, but I knew that recruiting became my jam. Uh, I really got obsessed with what that looked like. How could I uh, do it? How could I just be crazy at it? Um, and how could I do it in really massive numbers? I flew to Nashville 10 weeks into my business and I met the amazing Lauren Slocum. And, you know, so much from that trip stood out for me. But the biggest thing that stood out was her saying to me, go wide. So she was like, go wide. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. And, and I, it just stuck with me. And from then I just thought, you know what, somebody who has created just such a massive success in so many areas of her life. I'm like, when I grow up, I want to be just like her. Um, and, you know, I remember I said it to Linda and Linda said to me, yes, but you're going to be the Mel Brandt version. And, you know, there were a few defining things for me where I just went, okay, all right, I have to step into my greatness. I have to put my spin on it, but I got to go wide. So that's what I did. And I really just got absolutely obsessed with what I needed to do. So how do you recruit like a crazy person, but be fearlessly you? So these are some of the things that I'm going to cover tonight for you. Um, and I just thank each and every one of you for jumping on because this, this is what lights me up is, you know, being able to pass on to you some of the things that helped me um, and hopefully you can take a few things away and implement them. Uh, and I just want you to know if you do need any help, please, whether or not we're in downlines, uplines, sidelines, cross lines, doesn't matter. Um, I'm always here to, to help you. So please don't be scared to reach out. Um, so the first thing that I want to share is creating a following. Now, you might have heard this. I remember hearing this and thinking, oh, yeah, cool. What does that even look like? Creating a following is really, really getting clear on what you're about, who you are, and really what journey it is that you're going to take people on that are following you. So creating that following, to, in order to be able to do it, you have to, and these are the words of the amazing 
Mitch and Mills, you have to go to where you're heading and you have to wait for yourself to catch up. Like when I first heard that, you know, I'm blonde, right? Sorry to any other blondes on here. <laughs> but it took me a little while to process that. You've got to go to where you're heading and wait for yourself to catch up. And it, once it clicked, I was like, oh, wow, that is so true. Too many of us wait until we hit SC, SSC, and MD, whatever it is that you're doing, right? And then we go, okay, now I'm successful. But you have to wear those shoes long before you get there. You have to hold yourself like that. You have to wake up like that. You have to treat your business like that because then everything that you want will happen. Your business will start to look like what you want it to. You can't dip your toe, which I'm sure you've heard before, and then step into greatness. Yeah, you have to step into it first. And I just remember being told, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, just run. Yeah. And Jess said to me, uh, which is my upline, she said, Mel, my job is kind of like a horse race. And I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> so many little analogies in this business. It's a horse race. She said, you run and I'll steer and make sure that you don't guide, crash into the guide rails. I was like, right, perfect. This is great. And, you know, what an epic way to know that the people that are above you have your back and you don't need to know everything. Yeah, I have met so many people in this business, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, right? And what I've noticed over this time is the people that succeed in business, and it doesn't matter what type of business it is, but I can only really speak for online business, are the ones that understand that you must build your business first Okay, you must run, yeah, not hit the guide rails. When the time's right, you can step into things like branding and, you know, all these other crazy things that we get to do, YouTubes and, you know, vlogs and blogs and websites, you name it, right? You will get to dip your toe into a lot of those things. But you must run first. So this, I think, was the, the best piece of advice that I was given was don't worry about what else is going on just build your business and success loves speed so i really grabbed those analogies and i i am impatient so you know i wanted to be an md i mean i joined the business and i was like are we there yet a weekend um and you know i didn't really know what it looked like and i didn't know what i had to do i didn't know um you know what and even looked like i didn't even know what i needed to do but I just remembered one of the most successful women in uh, network marketing as a whole said, go wide. So what was I going to do? I was going to go so <laughs> wide, yeah, that it was actually going to be off the Richter. So I think it was, you know, around about that three-year mark, um, maybe earlier, that I worked out I had recruited uh, in excess of 100 frontline. Now, did that mean that my business blew through the roof? Well, in some cases, yeah. But in others, what it meant was, um, you know, I was tested in very, very large ways. Uh, did everybody come in and smash the business? No, not at all. Uh, how many of those 100 are left? I couldn't even tell you, okay? But the point is, I got obsessed with what recruiting looked like and put it into action. So whether or not those people stayed, yeah, that's not up to me. That's not up to me to make their decision. My, what I needed to do was to become absolutely obsessed with how to recruit like a boss. Okay. So uh, creating that following, I needed to get clear on what it was going to be about. Like who was I going to be? Yeah, how was I going to show up? And social media was the way that um, I built my business. So don't be scared to stand out is one thing that I want you to write down. Don't be scared to stand out. Yeah, because you're, you're in a world of sheep. Yeah, and you need to be a lion. You need to stand out. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. What makes you better? What makes you more attractive when we start talking business? So you are your business card. Now, are you going to be the business card? Now, let me see. I think I've got a pile of them here that I don't even think I've ever looked at. Are you going to be in those business cards? Or are you going to be in the business card where I'm like, wow, that's a really impressive business card? 
because it does something or it has a use. Yeah. So this is the thing. How are you going to stand out? For me, anyone that's met me covered in tattoos, I kind of stand out already, but I needed to have the attitude that matched. Right. So I needed to learn things like how to get into state. Now, what does that even mean? It means that, you know, I'm a mom and, and a, for a very long time uh, into my run to NMD, I was a single mom. So I'm struggling all the same battles that a lot of people are. And, you know, I needed to really be able to step into um, whatever it was at that time and I needed to be able to do it well. So if I was presenting, I needed to be high vibe. Yeah, if I was on a coaching call, I needed to be listening. You know, if I was, uh, I don't know, creating a post on Facebook that I wanted to grab everybody, it needed to be well thought out. So they are all states that you need to be in. You can't go and do a well thought out post when you've got kids screaming in your ear and the phone's going off and you're trying to cook dinner. You need to create these times in order for you to move forward. Now, some of you might be like, yeah, that's easy enough said. <laughs> How do I create time to even get five minutes to myself? Well, for me, I had to change my day around. So I set my alarm 30, 40 minutes earlier than my kids waking up. And they would be the times that I would do the things where I needed the quiet time. Or they would be the times where I would do the meditating. Yeah. So everyone made it through the day. Okay, so please set yourself up for these things because if you think that you can have a sleep in and you can build your business and you're going to do it well, yeah, and you're going to go to bed to late and you're going to wake up the next morning late, yeah, it's going to create this ripple effect of you feeling flustered, of you not knowing what you need to be doing every day and there's no routine. Yeah, you're going to be all over the place. And I can guarantee you that your business will look exactly the same. If you have no structure and you have no routine, what's the chances your business looks like that too? Pretty high. Okay. And that's not, a, it's not putting you down. It's not being like, oh my God, you can't do this. It is like, girl, boy, whoever we're talking to, get it together. It's, it's go time and it's time to be serious because you own a business and this business has the capabilities to change your life and thousands around you, but you just got to get out of your own way. So uh, the other thing um, with, you know, standing out, okay, one would be, you know, getting into state and getting really good at it because if your vibe is the same all the time, yeah, how do we know when you're excited? How do we know when you're being serious? How do we know when you're being vulnerable? Okay, so if speaking isn't something that excites you, which is completely normal, I would suggest going and doing some sort of course. Okay, like a Toastmasters or I know uh, Joel and that are doing a, a really cool course coming up. Um, better yourself. Yeah, get obsessed with bettering yourself. And all the areas that you don't like, they're all the areas you need to go and work on. All the ones that make you want to run and hide, yeah, put that at the top of your list, okay? Because they're all the things that you need to be doing. If events scare you, it's time to do some. If getting in front of crowds scares you, guess what you need to be doing, right? Because this is the thing. How are you going to stand out? If you think you can build your business wholly and solely behind a computer screen and create all these amass, uh, you know, amazing things and people are just going to jump at it, you're wrong. You have to create an authority and to create that authority, you must be out and about in the community. People must see you doing all the things that you love. People must see you meeting new people, making new friends, expanding your network. Yeah. And they're going to want to follow and they're going to want to do all those things as well. I've had people join my business who have been that petrified of even leaving the house yeah, and we've been able to get them to speak on calls to the point where they've become a little bit obsessed with it, which is amazing, right? And you have the capability to do the same thing for anyone that joins your team, but you must go first. Because if you don't, you don't have the right to recruit anyone and put any pressure on them, yeah, to be runners. We all want runners, yeah? We all want those people that can come in and blow your business to pieces. And you can run with them, yeah, and you can vibe off them, you can create amazing things. But are you doing it? Because if you're not doing it, 
you don't quite yet deserve the runner. Yeah, and I say that with all love. You don't quite deserve the runner. Yeah, because you must go first. You absolutely must go first. So one thing that I spoke to Gordon Hester about, and this was a, a smack in the face for me, was I, I got to a point where I said, Gordon, I need my business to blow up a second time. How do I do this? Like, how do I go and make it blow up for a second time? And he said to me, well, what are you doing? How did you get it to happen the first time? And I was like, I just got people excited about what my life used to look like compared to the journey that I was on and all the, the wrapping paper that I was pulling off this thing we call life. And I was doing it live. I was doing it in the moment. People were on the journey with me. They watched me start, you know, um, a mama. They, they watched me start a FIFO wife. They, they watched it all unfold um, before their eyes. So that's one thing I suggest doing as well. And I really took people on that journey, but I didn't know how, how do you do that again? Because everyone knew. Everyone knew my story. They knew what I'd done. They knew life had changed. So how do I do that again? And I sort of thought, well, you know, I want to bring a different type of person into my business. I want the people that are hungry. I want the people that uh, understand business already. How do I even do that? Now, who's been like, I want those people. How do I even get <laughs> Where do they hang out? Yeah. Um, and, you know, what he said to me was, Mel, you've taken people on a journey and you've got the people that needed help. You got them some hope on your trip. Some of them joined you, some of them didn't, but you gave them hope on your trip. Now you're not looking for those exact type of people. Your avatar's changed. And he said, now you need to take people on a journey of where you're going now. And I was like, oh, yes, hallelujah. That is like gold. Get them excited for where you're going now. Draw a vision, paint a vision, you know, get people excited for the travel. Get people excited for the growth. Get them excited for the personal growth. Yeah, get them excited about the fact that I am a better mom now than I was a few years ago. Yeah, get them excited about the fact that my health looks 10 times better than it did a few years ago. Yeah, so maybe what I didn't share a lot of because I was still in the moment was when I was building my business, I was still drinking quite a lot. Yeah, and I, I wasn't really going to highlight that. Yeah, because I was still doing it. There was no way I was going to catch myself on my own BS, right? I wasn't ready to do that yet. So as my journey continued and my health journey continued, and now I, I rarely, rarely drink. I'm on the clean eating bandwagon. Shred 10 is my every day. Um, you know, now I can start to get people excited, yeah, for what life looks like now and help them maybe move through some of those things. Now that's vulnerable. Some people might go, I would never say that. I can't believe she just said that. Yeah, but you know what? The more vulnerable you can get, the more people you can take with you. <laughs> Literally, the more people you can take with you. Now, I stood on stage in front of 9,000 people in Anaheim and shared some of the most rawest things that I have ever shared. Yeah, I come from a background of heavy addiction, abuse, you name it. But I've shared that story now. Now, I'm not that person anymore that I was when I started this business and I don't want to carry that shit around with me anymore. Yeah, that's a chapter that we've done, we've closed, we've moved through. Yeah, we've come out the other side, we've been spat out the other side. Yeah, ruffled feathers and everything and we've, we've got it all back together and now it's time to keep moving forward. So I really challenge you that if you are trying to drag a ball and chain with you, yeah, you must go and deal with that stuff. You've got to go and do all those things. And they're uncomfortable, they're in your face, they make you cry, they make your business do this, yeah? But when you get spat out the other end with your ruffled feathers, you, you are so clear on who you are, what you're about and where you're going. But you have to do the work. 
So too many people I see in business in general trying to drag a ball and chain of pain and live this amazing happy life and put it on a highlight reel. It becomes painful, it becomes tiring, and you resent your business. So that would be the biggest tip that I could give you um, in, I guess, life <laughs> so far. I, I, I haven't got many life tips because I'm not really too far into it. Um, but, you know, that would be one of the biggest is you just cannot, you cannot be vibrant, radiant and high vibe until you've, you've dealt with it all. And what happens after that is you get to share with your team, your loved ones, your friends, your family, all those cool things um, that you learn and inspire people to take those steps as well. This is how you build also authority by going first. Yeah, people then, when I started this business, I said to, to Lauren, I want to be that person where when, when I walk in the room, people say, because of you, I didn't give up. And the first time I ever heard that was at Melbourne conference and I almost fell over. They were the exact words that I said to Lauren and somebody said them back to me. And to me, it doesn't matter what my reports look like. Yeah, in that moment, it didn't matter how many customers I had, didn't matter what level I was at, how many clubs I had, that is success in my eyes because I became who I always wanted to be. What do you think business will do? Yeah, your business is gonna reflect those really, really cool things. And you know, my business, was flourishing massively at that time. So um, that is a, a really, really valuable uh, lesson that I learned. So like I said, sharing your story, um, God, you know what? Stop sharing the fluffy one. Your fluffy is not going to help you, okay? You have to get vulnerable, right? You have to share and look, vulnerability doesn't mean that you've got a nitty gritty, right? Doesn't mean nitty gritty, but it means you've got to get real. You have to showcase to people who you are, what you've been through, where you've come from and where you're going because that's what gets them excited to come with you. Remembering that when people join you, they're buying into you, literally you. Yeah, the product, yeah, the business, great. But it's you, you're the one that they love. You're the one that they want to work with. It's you they want to join apart from someone else that's doing Juice Plus because you've excited them or you've inspired them or you know what, you're just like them and they see something in you that they want to maybe become. So we hear Linda say it all the time, we are dream keepers, yeah? And that's not fluffy. We literally are dream keepers. We literally hold the essence that some people haven't quite got to yet, yeah? And you've got to have a really big shiny set to go there, yeah? You have to really, really go in the trenches, you know, and do all the hard stuff. So please, you know, if you haven't got your story down pat and you're not sharing it on a weekly, if not daily basis, yeah, it's time to step it up a notch. Step it up, big shiny set. Yes, I didn't get the nickname Glitter Balls for no reason. So, look, the thing with this whole process, okay, of how to be you fearlessly and recruit is to work out the process. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, and to do this business, you need to work out there's a secret sauce. There has to be because this person's doing it really well and I'm not, right? There is no secret sauce. I'm sorry to tell you. And when I heard this, I got pretty bummed too. I was like, really? Really? There's not? Like, I'm in this really nice little confined, intimate group of leaders and I'm ready for this secret sauce that you're going to give me. And there's still none. Um, but no, there's not. But what there is, is there's a process. And there is an exact process to follow that I see getting massive, massive conversion, okay, um, because I don't stray from the process. Now, some people say, um, okay, well, show me and I'll do it. Yeah, so I'll show them, okay. But if you tweak it in any way, I, don't, I can't tell you what your results are going to be. If you add your own flair on it and make the message that you might reach out 10 times longer than the original one, 
I don't know what it's going to do. Yeah, but if you become obsessed with the exact process, chances are you're going to have some pretty epic results. And I'm going to share with you what my exact process is. Okay, get a really fast pen because I'm going to shoot it at you. Uh, the first bit would be you're either going to do a post, you're going to reach out, you're going to reconnect. Okay, so you're going to show up, reach out, re or reconnect. Okay, now you know what those look like. Okay, reconnecting, you don't know them, go and say hi, see what's going on in their life. Yeah, um, showing up might be you're going to do a post um, and people are going to comment and say, yes, I want to know more. Or you're going to reach out and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm super excited. You know, you have a vibe that is super infectious and like I want to be able to tell you more about what I'm doing. Would you be open to it? Right? You've heard these a million times. So that is step one. Yeah, this might go on, okay, for a little bit. Yeah, you might have to have a bit of back and forth. Maybe you can't ask them to check out what you're doing straight away because you haven't found their pain point yet, okay? Um, so you need to do that process, okay? So in here is where we would slot the frog. Yeah, get to know them. Where are they from? What's their recreation? What do they do for work? What are their goals? Loads of questions around those types of things, okay? Then... Once you offer to either check out the product or the opportunity, you would send a link, but you need to ask permission first. So if I would you, if I was to send a link, would you have time to check it out today? And yes, you need to put in the word today. Why? Because A, you want them to check it out today and you need to put some urgency towards that. But B, yeah, is you must know when you're going to be able to follow up. Okay, next thing is your follow-ups. I couldn't tell you how many people I've heard say, oh, I really suck at follow-ups. Okay, well, that's a bit of an issue because fortune's in the follow-up and if you're not doing it, you're really not focused right now <laughs> on growing your business. Okay, get serious about it. So what I do when I send out the link, I've got my diary right there with me all the time. If you're running this business without a diary, you're mad get one. Okay. I'll have my diary out and I will open up to the next day, schedule it in. Follow up with Mary. Done. Nobody gets missed. Yeah. How many people did I miss in order to get this process? <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds who probably got recruited by other people. Yeah. So very, very important that you find something that works for you and roll with it. Once I've followed up, yeah, and they say, oh, my gosh, it looks amazing. I, I, I love it. That's when I say to them, you know, does this look like something that you could see yourself being a part of? Don't be scared to ask these people. They've just told you they love it. Or maybe they have a few more questions. Whatever it is, it's not a no. Okay, and that's when I say, look, I would love to chat to you about it more. I'm sure you've got heaps of questions. And there's a few ways that we do this. And I would love to just be able to show you the best, easiest, fastest way to be able to do it. Because I've been in this business for a little bit now and I've made all the mistakes for you. So can I call you at 10 tomorrow? This is how cruisy I am with people when I message them. I speak to them as if I'd known them forever. Yeah, and this is the other thing with, about, with being authentically you. If you've met me, you know that that's exactly how I'll speak to you, whether I've known you for 10 minutes or 20 years. Yeah, I will treat you like I've known you forever. I will speak to you exactly the same and I do it with anyone who's potential team or potential customers as well. Obviously, there's a professional side to it, yeah, but I am cruisy with them. Because it takes away that feeling of desperation as well. So take away the desperation. Um, so that is the process. <laughs> Reach out, okay, in some way, whether it's a post or a connect or a, a, a direct reach out, whatever it is. Reach out, send a link, follow up, land a call. That's it. Now, people say to me, how long, Mel, until you reach out to someone that you don't know? How long before you tell them about the business? Um, two days. Why? Because there's billions of people to speak to in this world. And if I'm talking to someone that's not interested, I really can't spend too much time there because there's other people that are. And I'm looking for them. 
So I will reach out to someone and get to know them, do the frog. Yeah. And you know what, if I don't find their pain point in that first day, but I, but maybe they said, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm on maternity leave at the moment, but they didn't say that they didn't want to go back to work. They didn't really put any pain behind it. I might leave it a day or two. And then I go back. Hey, Sarah, I was thinking about you today. Crazy. I know. Right. But you said that you were on maternity leave. Now I'm a mum. I'm guessing that you're probably not too excited to be going back once you've had Bub, yeah? Or once Bub's a little bit older. Am I right? She's going to come back and go, um, yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm not looking forward to it. So I've actually just fished for that pain. Yeah, I've actually just put her in a position of tell me your pain right now, this second right now. And she says, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, totally. I don't want to at all. And I said, look, I thought that might be the case. So, look, would you be open to checking out something that I'm working on? I think it might really align with your values. And gosh, it changed my world. Yeah, come from the heart. Like, it changed my world. And I'm out there just looking for mamas that, that want to have their world changed. I mean, you don't need to keep going and going and going and going, okay? You don't need to write a message to someone and then explain why you sent it and then be like, oh, but if you don't want to, that's fine. Yeah, like you've just taken them through an emotional roller coaster in one message. Oh my God, I really love your vibe and I really want to work with you. But if you don't want to work with me, that's fine. Oh, but I'd really love you to check out a link. But if you don't have time, that's cool too. What? No. Yeah, you have to be rock solid about what you're doing and be like, if you don't jump on this train, you're nuts. You're mad. Watch me or join me. Because either way, I'm not hanging around here for long. Yeah, and people pick up that vibe. They pick up on that vibe. So nail the process of recruiting. Keep it simple because this business isn't hard. It is not hard. But if you're putting your flair on it and you, you're getting really professional and you're using lots of big words and your messages are this long, I don't know about you, but even anyone I know sends me a message this long, straight away I hold my finger down on it and go, Mark is unread. Don't have time. I might have to get back to that one when I've got like a fair bit of time to sit down. Yeah, it's already a little bit of a burden to even read that message because I know it's going to take up a hell of a lot of my time. So the, people feel the same. We're in a world where things happen fast. Things happen fast. People are impatient. They want it yesterday. Yeah, so you must get to the point, but you must do it in a way that's authentic, um, you know, and obviously professional in the way that you're offering the opportunity. Not diving in and headhunting. Um, look, I'm not going to lie. It worked for me a little bit. Uh, just reaching out cold call. But I'd already created the authority and I was very, very active on social media. If I was reaching out to people that were on my friends list, nine times out of ten, they'd already seen me do lives or knew what I was about. So you, you must understand that you, you have to have taken that aspect seriously first. Otherwise, you're probably going to get ignored. Um, so put yourself into situations that scare you. Now you've heard this over and over again, but what did you do today that scared you? Cause I know that if even I ask myself, there's actually nothing today. Yeah. So there's, there's one opportunity that was lost. What did I do a few days ago that scared me? Put myself into a situation where I spoke face to face with a trainer okay, um, who could potentially blow this business to pieces. Face to face, right, scares me, scares me big time, okay, and I just went, hey, you know what, I believe in this product, I believe what I'm about, and when he asked me what it is I do, that was my time to shine, yeah, and my shoulders were back, my head was held high, and the way that I spoke, he knew that if he didn't take a look at this, he was mad. Now I could have had my shoulders slumped and my voice like this and could have been like, yeah, you know, just take a look. I don't know, like look at it if you want. Yeah, people pick up on your body language. You must deliver what it is you do like a boss. Yeah, you're already an MD. 
who cares? SC, SSC, QNMD, who cares? NMD, 100 Club, 50 Club, who cares? Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter what that title is. You're already there and you must hold yourself as if you're already there. Now, I've got, I've got so many notes here, but I'm going to spit them all out at you really fast now. Think outside the box. It, you are not going to be able to put two posts a day on Facebook and go and recruit like a mad woman. It's mad or man. It's not going to work. Yeah, that is the fundamental little tiny tools that you must do to keep people watching you. They're the little tiny things you must do for people to build their belief in you and build your authority. You must be doing things behind the scenes. Salad in a jar parties, amazing, okay? They're really cool to do when you've got a community. So say, uh, Kyla, I'm going to use you as an example. Say you're a PT, you've already got a community, yeah? You don't really want to dive in there and spew juice plus all over them just yet right? So what do you do? You get them all together and start showcasing community. That builds authority because you're at, the, you're at the front of the room. You organized it. Yeah. People are going to be like, oh my God, that was so awesome. God, I want to do it again. I love this girl. That was such a good day. Yeah. Immediately you're starting to build that authority. Then you might say to them, hey, we've got this Curic Ashley thing on, you know, at the Gold Coast. And oh, God, I just think it'll be right up your alley. Tickets are cheap as why don't you come with me? Boom. Second time that you're hanging out with them. Then they're around a few people that you know, they're getting an idea of community and you could say to them, hey, I, I got no idea if this will interest you, but this is what I do. This is what I call work. You know, maybe, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but you should check it out. And sometimes I even joke about it. Sometimes I have people where, you know, you're like, oh, my life, oh, my job. And I'm like, you know, there's this thing called online business. I mean, I don't really know much about it, but I heard it's pretty good. And they're like, Mel, oh, really? And I'm like, just saying. Like I add an aspect of cheeky in there because it's part of me. If you know me, you know I'm joking around all the time. Yeah, I'm not going to change that because I'm talking about my business. I'm going to add it in there. Okay, and sometimes people are like, oh, for God's sake, send me the link then. And then they're like, wow, I actually, wow, I didn't realize that it was that good. I didn't realize I was actually going to like this thing that you do. Yeah, so bring fun into it as well. Um, so salad and jars, girls nights in, okay. Sorry, Joel, but I, these are just the ones I've done. <laughs> Man land, I don't know. Uh, girls nights in, babes, bubbles and business. Get the girls together. Who else do you know that does online business? Maybe you know someone that does makeup, hair, whatever. Get them in, okay, and say, let's do one together. You bring your girls, I'll bring my girls. Your girls might buy your stuff and mine, your whatever, vice versa. Yeah, you're going to get to extend your network and I'm going to extend mine and we're all going to get to have champagne. Winning, Yeah collaborate with people that are already doing this because their network is probably sick of seeing what they're doing, right? So you get to add in a really cool, fun aspect to that as well. So when was the last time you hung out with people? Yeah, you, if you're trying to build a business and you're not showcasing fun, why are people going to want to join you? They're not. You must do it. It's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's crazy. Sometimes it's heaps of fun. Sometimes it's a total flop. Yeah, but you have to do it. And on the flops, more wine for you. Not a problem, right? So look, daycare stalls. Can you get in contact with a daycare and say, hey, would you mind if I came in with some really yummy little treats for the kids, a little bit of information on healthy eating and just shared it in your foyer for an hour or two once this month? Um, what can they say? No? Okay, cool. Next next, next, right? We've done some of these and they've been extremely successful. Okay. Uh, Rockwear, Lorna Jane. Yeah. If you're into that type of stuff, we've done them. They let you have a stall and just share some chocolate balls and all sort of cool stuff. Yeah. And you get to tap into people who are already keen on health, fitness, all those types of things. Gyms. Gyms usually have an open day once a month um, where you can go in, have a table, set up, boom, how many more people do you need at your feet? But the thing is, you've got to just leave your computer to get there, right? Um, giveaways are the other thing, you know? How can you get people to follow you all the time? And like, all right, I bought this bottle, two bucks, yeah? Get some little books and their, um, you know, fitness guides or 
clean eating recipe books and a pen and maybe you're going to get them a go fresh gift card or like these companies give this stuff away guys yes yeah, so is it so fresh what's that food one there's a food one i think that where you can get all your food delivered to you and it's got all your recipes and stuff already done ring them and be like do you know what i want to put a hundred people in front of your company can you send me a hundred 25 percent off gift vouchers and they're like um yeah i'll express post them to you thank you think outside the box connect with companies that want your network okay and they're going to give you something to be able to add for free as well okay think about all the things that you love doing okay and go back and do them if you used to love skateboarding, go back and do it. Rollerblading, do it. Yes, you're probably going to fall over. I did. Okay, but I went back and did all the things I loved. Swimming, my hair was green as a kid. I swam that much. Why am I not doing it anymore? Oh, because I'm an adult, right? And I need to do adult stuff? No. Get back to doing all the things you love because the chances are you're going to meet people that are just like you. It's pretty high. Actually, extremely high. Okay, so go back to basics just in life in general. Go and mimic a child. Go and not care about what people think for the day. Yeah, fill your cup up. Take photos of it. Put it on your Insta story. Put it on your Facebook story. Barbie, getting on the beach doing cartwheels. Like, do you know what that did when I saw that? Because I can tell you if I wasn't in this business, that would have inspired the shit out of me to go and do something I hadn't done for a very long time, right? Do not underestimate the power of going first. So you'll meet people just like you. And the last thing I want to leave you with, because I've definitely um, shared some really cool things tonight that I really hope that you implement is the five foot rule. If you live by the five foot rule, now that is not Mel, you're five foot tall. No, you were thinking that. It is if anybody is within five foot of you, you owe it to them to share what it is that you know. What if someone in your family needed this business and someone you knew couldn't get out of their own way enough to offer you the product or the business? Because I know for me, that if it wasn't offered to me, I couldn't tell you where my life would be. Financially, I'd be in a very bad place, very bad place. My kids would not be starting tomorrow at the best school that I could get them in. Yeah, I wouldn't be locking in Bali, America twice this year, you know, Perth, Melbourne, you name it right? I wouldn't be doing it without this opportunity all because someone took 30 seconds to get out of their own way and not think, oh, she's just going to say no. Oh, I've spoke to 10 people and they've all said no. So I'm not even going to message her. No, you don't want the people that are saying no, that's good. Next, excuse me, move. Yeah. You want those people to say no because they're not ready. They're not excited about what you're doing. They don't even understand what you're doing. You don't want them anyway. So they're actually doing you a blessing. It's a blessing that they said no. Because trust me, when people come into this business and you pour your time into them and then they quit, yeah, you're like, oh, okay, might have dragged them, might have maybe drawn the vision for them and, and they didn't want it, right? Whatever it is. You must not get hung up on the nose. So my last thing, I think I already said my last thing, but here's another one. Here is, and I think there's another couple of hundred pages somewhere, but these are all of my grids for, the, for my run to NMD. Okay. Now some of these, some of these, um, yeah, look, if you just look at that, I think that's about 20 pages for a month. Yeah. At five to six names a box you do the maths yeah 30 days in a month is what i was working on five to six names a day and in some months 20 times 30 lots of conversations going how bad do you want it is all i have to leave you guys with so joel i'm going to flick it back over to you because i'm sure there might be a few little questions that i can answer but I hope well, that 
That was epic. Like, my goodness. Like, who, like, go crazy in the chat. Come on. We're not asleep, guys. That was amazing. Far out. Uh, who's more inspired now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So, uh, I'm going to be cheeky and ask some questions, like, first. But, Mel, I'm really intrigued to know, like, after that conversation with uh, Gordon, where are you going now? Oh, so for me, uh, to be brutally honest, I'm going back to basics. So I'm going back to salad and a jar parties and mountain climbs and girls nights in. One, because I'm overdue. Uh, two, because they're easy and super enjoyable. Um, moving forward from there, I'm going back into massive recruit mode and getting rid of some of the excuses that I harnessed along the way believe it or not once I hit NMD like Linda says yeah I got comfortable I got really squishy sitting there I was like yeah this is this is good that was that was tough that was a really tough run to NMD and I'm just gonna have a rest yeah that was almost two years ago now so I'm just gonna call myself on my own BS um and you know what I I want to never have to look my kids in the eyes and say no. And I want to never have to look my kids in the eyes and say I couldn't be bothered. So it's time to get busy. So from here, I'm moving into some really exciting things. I, I've set myself some goals, uh, health goals, business goals, mental goals. Uh, so I've drawn the wheel. You guys have all seen the wheel before. And I've tested myself and challenged myself on every aspect of that wheel and what I'm going to do to step it up. So health, uh, my goal is to run five kilometres without stopping. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that, but we're going to get there. Um, in business, I plan on re, uh, re-promoting to NMD. This time I want to do it in a 12-month window. Uh, 20 months, meh. I reckon I could do it in 12. Um, life in general, uh, I'm just going to find a little bit more balance and make a little bit more time for, for the important things like the meditating and the, the going for the swim and the skateboard and all the things that really light me up. But I've tested myself massively um, and I want to learn some new things when it comes to social media. So vlogging, blogging, websites, funnels, you name it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a go at it um, because I just want to know. I've become obsessed with how and, and I love that. I really, really love that. And if I become obsessed with the how, it means that I get to pass it on to all of you. So that's what it looks like for me moving forward. Wow, that's amazing. What a leader. And like every time I get uh, like you and Lauren on here and I'm um, like going to eventually get Linda on here, maybe in the next few weeks, she doesn't know I'm going to ask her until right this second. But, <laughs> no pressure. Um, I just always feel like I've got to step my game up. I think I'm like, like I'm like, I feel like I'm working really hard and stepping my game up in all areas. And then you guys just blow my mind. I'm like, Holy crap. There's just always another level. Like it's so amazing. And I guess like, like for those people that have, um, that are on the upward trajectory and feeling a bit frustrated, like um, what about face down moments? Like I know like just, by the fact that you've been in the business for four years that you would have had some face down moments. Like a couple of weeks ago, I think I messaged a couple of people and I said, Oh, well, I think I'm going to go buy a farm and just grow some tomatoes where there's no internet for a while. Uh -huh. <laughs> like it's, so like, did you ever have a need to go grow tomato yeah. no internet time? And how yeah, did you? Yeah, like a week ago, a week yeah. ago, I was like, you know what? Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Hmm. I might just go get a job. <laughs> it didn't take me long to snap out of that really fast um, because the fear of the work that I've put in mm. um, going down the drain for me, my goals were to be able to be at all those special days. And, you know, if I had a stuck to that last week, I probably wouldn't be watching my youngest start her first day of school tomorrow. Um, so I'm constantly reminded by the universe, pull your head in, Mel, really pull your head in. 
Um, and and I, I'm really tough on myself. So when I don't see things go the way that I want, yes, I do have miniature tantrums. Um, but I'm learning because I always want to be better and be more. I'm learning to not stay with, you know, like Linda would say, the itty bitty shitty committee in the driver's seat, um, you know, and just moving through it and working out what's triggering me. And usually I can get to the bottom of it. You know, usually I, I will have a face down moment or, you know, I've quit a million times. Um, but I actually go, you know what, Mel, what's the actual problem? And it's like, oh, I, I haven't put any team on. Okay, let's just go do that. No, rather than going, oh, this isn't working because this is working. Yeah, and this does work, but there might be aspects of it that aren't working that month. So really just narrowing it down to what's the problem, let's not be a drama queen, and let's just go and do what we need to do. Um, so I sit in it for a little bit. Sometimes I like to sit in it for a little bit and have my little pity party. Um, but yes, I'm learning to get out of it really fast. And you know, what used to affect me for days, sometimes even weeks, um, doesn't usually hang around in my mind for longer than sort of 10 minutes these days. So I think learning the tools and having your tool belt full of resources to help you move through the hard times. Cause if you think you're going to reach NMD, hundred club, whatever it is you're going for, and this is going to be a breeze, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. Um, and this isn't to put anyone off, you know, but this is just to be real. You, you are compressing a 40-year career into potentially five years, seven years, uh, who knows? Yeah, like your challenges are going to come in thick and fast, but it's still worth it every single time. And I actually get excited now when my chest goes tight and my palms go sweaty and I get this thing that I used to call anxiety, yeah, which I now call... Uh, fear of the future I actually get excited because right on the other side of that is something pretty cool I don't know what it looks like and that's usually what scares the hell out of me but I know that there's something on the other side of that and it's going to make me level up it's going to make me learn something maybe it's going to get me out of my bs who knows I don't know what it looks like but I've actually become in actuated with that feeling now so the, the thing I used to use as an excuse um, has now become my exact driver and I look now for things that make my chest go tight and my palms go sweaty that's what I want that's where the growth is yeah like it's so amazing like I notice like I've been lucky enough to be around a lot of leaders and uh, in different industries and yeah they, they tend to teach themselves over time and that's what personal development has been for me to learn how to f not feel bad for long periods of time and then all of a sudden yeah. you you can just something that used to as you said knock you over for weeks or a week you can handle it in like 30 seconds or a minute or hey if you really want to an hour if you want to yeah. leave a mini party but yeah that, that's totally. sensational. so um yeah uh does anyone have any questions before i continue and i haven't got i've got it on speak of you so there was a question up further i think there was one yeah there was one what are the best best links to send out look i have a mum's link so it's uh the secret to your best life i think it is uh then i have a no kids link <laughs> so the bachelorette uh, and that might be a side hustle um, or, uh, you know, there's so many out there. And this is the cool thing, yeah, is if you're not going and connecting and making sideline buddies in other teams, you're crazy. Because when you do, they share their links with you. And some of them are phenomenal, absolutely phenom phenomenal. So I've been lucky enough to, to link up with uh, Danielle Hatton and some amazing girls that have shared uh, the Limitless uh links so that is their group their tribe but you know what if i've got a young girl that's a bachelorette that's the one that i'm going to show her because these girls are exactly like them um side hustle with adam westwick is the ones that i'm showing anyone who uh, understands business and is in the pt or fitness world because obviously i can say this guy shut down gyms like this is what he does you don't believe me like why don't you come to an event you can meet him if you like you know i've got that backing so i just have a couple um, to be honest. So do they have kids? Cool. I send them um, living your best life. If they don't, I send them, you know, something that's quite young and funky that suits where they're going. 
older generations, um, you know, if they're joining the business for a specific reason, I try and match the link with that. Otherwise, I just send the living your best life and it seems to, seems to work really well. Um, keep it simple. Sweet. Um, so how do you create a following without thinking about branding and the future you? Be you. Be you because that's exactly what you need to be. Be you because that's perfect. Yeah, showcase you, showcase fun, showcase your day. Um, and you know what? If you go, oh, I'm, not, I'm really not fun. Well, now's your time. You know, if you wanted to go do dance lessons, now's your time. If you wanted to go do swimming, now's your time. Um, you know, because you really need to get people to follow you because they love what you share. So be vulnerable, be you, um, because that's, that's what they'll love. And if you don't feel as though you're enough, then I'd be putting that at the top of your list of the things that you need to go and work on. Amazing. And have fun. I think fun yeah. is like something that people are sorely, uh, yeah. be a joker, yeah. be a joker because you know, that friend that you have, you know, the one that's crazy that mucks around and jokes all the time. Why do you think everyone remembers them? Christine, yeah. is that who you're talking about? Like, yes, yes, yep. yes, right? <laughs> she stands out. She stands out. She makes you laugh. And you know what? I bet you the reason that you remember Christine is because of a way she made you feel. I can absolutely guarantee that there was a way that she made you feel. Uh, maybe, you know, it was the way she spoke to you. Maybe it was the way she joked. Maybe it was the worm. Who knows what it was, but I can absolutely guarantee you that there was something in it that made you remember her because she stood mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Did she made me wear a weight suit head? while I ran upstairs. So that's, she made me feel like really tired and sore the next day. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> she does nasty things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you um, had a superpower, what would it be? Oh my goodness. Um, I would teach everyone how to make communication your jam. Wow. Because when you understand communication and body language and adaptability, you become unstoppable. Far out. Wow. So guys, I'm gonna, it's right before my final question. If you've got anything you want to ask Mel, now's the time. Take yourself off mute and ask a question or forever hold your feet. Hey Mel, it's Linda. Yeah. Oh, hi. Phenomenal call. Amazing. Okay. There's so many beautiful new shining faces on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you recommend for them if they're in their first six months? Because it's overwhelming. Yeah. The amount of groups, the amount of starter guides, the amount of information, yeah. the amount of post examples, the amount of branding opportunities. What, when you say you're getting back to the basics, my heart skipped a beat. I just love it because we all need to. We, we need mm -hmm. to reset all the time in this business and come back to the main thing. What would you say um, is the main thing for them to focus on? What do they get paid to do? What? Yeah. So I think. Listen to, where should they go? Yeah, get obsessed with the process. Um, you know, watch what your leaders are doing but build your sideline buddies as well I think is really important um have people to bounce off because you can't do there's nobody in my town that does juice plus um you know there is um sorry saying my internet's unstable hopefully it's all good um but you know I would say uh go and find a couple of people that you love that are just like you in this business and follow what they do because success leaves clues. And I did it with Jess. You know, I literally mimicked everything she did. She did an event, I did one. If she did calls, I was doing them. If she was landing freeways, so was I. And, you know, she hit, the, hit NMD in 18 months and I hit it in 20. Your results will look pretty much exactly the same if you commit to doing everything that it takes. So I would say a strong DMO is really important. A no excuses attitude, some strong leadership that you're following um, and some really, really cool sideline bodies to work with. Don't worry about the rest of it. Don't brand. Don't, you know, I mean, if, you, if you've already got a background in marketing, cool. You know what you're doing. But if you don't, you don't even be looking at branding until, you know, SSC and forward. Just run. 
yeah, your job, run, it's the horse race and hopefully you've got someone that's going to help you not hit the guide rails because success loves speed and definitely at the start of your business, people are watching you like hawks. So use it up um, while you've got it there. Awesome. Good that to see you. Amazing. That was amazing. Is there anyone else that wants to ask a question? I'm just going to, we've got dual screens on this time. Anyone on the second page? No one? Love All right. That. Excellent. All right. So, Melanie, if you had a billboard that the entire planet could see, oh dear. <laughs> what would be your message to the entire world? Okay. All right, well, there'll be no swearing, guys. All right. Um, <laughs> surprising, I know. Um, what would my message be to the world? Uh, be fierce in your pursuit of success, whatever that looks like for you. Amazing. Guys. That was such a great call. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Melanie. Everyone go crazy one last time in the to show our thanks because You're uh, welcome. Do you think that if you showed people this call, uh, that they would be excited about being in this business? Like it was sensational. This is what I will be sending out as a link because it's it was crazy. So guys, thank, thank you for you. joining. And I'm gonna stop the recording and we can all say goodbye.